Bar charts are one of the most commonly used visualizations in any Power BI report. That is because they are simple to understand and they make comparison between items very easy. Now, one of the struggle points often though is when you have long item names and not a lot of space for the bar charts themselves, then, well, it looks like this, very cramped. But what we could do is take the labels and put them above every bar. Now, let's see how this can be done. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now, over here, I already have a bar chart set up. And you see the problem straight away is that we don't have a lot of space for well, the labels that we have on the y-axis. Now, how could we solve this? Now, option one would be to select the chart and then go to formatting options, we go here to the y-axis, and here we can just decrease the font size from 9 to 8 to 7. No, 7 doesn't work. 8 is the smallest, and it already starts to look a little bit better. Another thing that we can do is to increase the max area width. If we put this all the way up to 50%, the maximum, then we can read the full labels that we have on the y-axis. However, the downside is that the bars themselves, well, they become smaller and smaller. And at some point, well, maybe too small. So instead of this, I would like to take the labels that we have on the y-axis and put them above the bars. Now, for that, we of course need to create a little bit of space between the bars themselves. Now, to be able to create that extra space, we need another measure. So let's start there. I'm going to add a new measure. Now, let's call this new measure labels placeholder. And we're going to set it equal to zero because we don't want to show a new set of bars. We just want to create a little bit of space. Now, this measure, we're going to add to a bar chart. So let's grab it and put it on top of a visual. And, well, that looks pretty ugly. So let's do a few formatting changes. First of all, we don't need the legend. So I'm going to go over here, turn the legend off. Then you also see that we have labels for the new measure showing zero everywhere. Well, that I also don't want. So I'm going to go over here to data labels. And then here we can say we want to change the labels for the labels placeholder and I would like to turn the labels off. All right, so that those are not visible anymore. Now, then if we go back over here to where we structure the visualization, I would like to have the labels placeholders above my other measure, the sales total. However, hmm, now the colors don't look good anymore and the sorting looks a little bit off. So again, I have to go back to my formatting options, go here to bars, and here I'm just going to change the color from pink to blue. All right. Now, then also the sorting order we have to update because now it's sorting by the labels placeholder and I want it to sort by sales total. Okay. Now, you see that the width of the bars is less because, well, now we have basically another measure that shows zero everywhere and that creates a little bit of extra space between the bars where we are going to show our labels later. Now, as the next step, let's get rid of the y-axis because we are going to take the labels from the y-axis to above the bars. Okay, now I'm going to go over here to the y-axis. Let's just turn it off. Okay, and now you see, suddenly we have, of course, much more space for the bars themselves. But, well, the labels are still not showing. But what we are going to do now is we're going to go back here to data labels for the labels placeholder. And where we just turn them off, well, Actually, I want to have them on again, because now you see we have here everywhere, zero, 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 zero. And we're going to replace these zeros with, well, the product names or the product subcategory names that we were just showing before on the y-axis, okay? So to be able to do that, we can make use of, well, custom labels that you find here under values. And then here we can turn custom label on, and we just need to write a measure that returns, well, the name of each product subcategory. Now, let's go over here and add another measure. And let's call this one labels for the bar chart. And then over here, subcategories. Okay, now, here we just want to return the subcategory name whenever there's, well, just one subcategory. So, we can do this with a selected value function. 
You could also actually do it with a max or min. However, over here, we only want to return it when there is only one value, and that is exactly what the selected value function checks for. Okay, so we go for select value, bracket open, and over here, I want to check the subcategory name. All right, and that's it. Now, this measure we can now use for the custom labels. So I'm going to go back to our formatting options, and here we just drag and drop that new measure onto the field for the custom labels. Now, it looks like this, which yeah, is still not great because it kind of overlaps with the bars themselves. So we have to make some formatting adjustments. Now, first of all, double check here for values, the font size. Now, it is already as small as it can be. Eight is the smallest. Now, of course, we could go for a different font, which would make it smaller, but it probably would still wouldn't solve a problem. So what we still need to do then is to go here to bars and then spacing. And here we can play around with the inner padding and the maximum category width. If we increase the minimum category width from the 20 pixels that it is at the moment to, let's say, 40 pixels, then we have more space between the bars. Now, let's leave it at 40 for the time being. And then here, the second thing that we can play with is the inner padding. If we slide this a little bit more to the right, then you see that the bars become a little bit smaller. If I slide it all the way to the left, then the bars become a little bit wider. Okay, now just choose the settings that make it look the best. Now, I'm going to go here for 10 pixels, and that already starts to look a little bit better. But one thing still looks kind of off, and that is that the subcategory names don't look exactly the same as they used to look. Well, let's have a closer look. Therefore, projectors and screens, it says projectors and amp semicolon screens, because custom labels, they don't let you show unique characters at the moment. So until it's possible to use these special icons and unique characters inside of your custom labels, we need to clean up the, well, the names that we have for our labels. So to do this, let's go back to the labels measure. And here we can just say that we want to substitute. And then here we have the text, all text, new text. Now the text over here is, well, the subcategory name. All right. And then we want to have the old text, well, that's that ampersand, and we want to replace that with the new text, which could just be, well, and. All right, so we're just substituting the and icon with, well, and. Okay, now let's see how this looks like. Now you see it looks much cleaner. Okay, so what we basically did is we used a dummy measure as a placeholder for our labels, and then we set that equal to zero so that no bar shows, but we do have a little bit of extra space. Now, and then for those bars that don't really show, we added custom labels that we defined with another measure. Okay, and that's the whole trick, how we could take the labels from the y-axis and put them above every single bar. However, now we want to make this maybe more readable and put extra information in the labels because now we have a lot of space to do so. Now, one thing that we could do here is take the labels for the sales and maybe put them inside of the bars. Okay, now let's try this first. So I'm going to go back to the formatting settings and then we go to data labels again. And now we want to change it for the series sales total. And here we can change in the options, the position. Maybe we would like to take the values and put them inside of bars. So inside and now that makes it maybe a little bit more readable. All right. Now, another idea would be to take the values and put them well also above the bars. It's also possible. Then we just have to turn them off. Uh, so over here, we can say that we don't want to show the data labels at all for uh, the series sales total. And then we go back to our labels for the bar chart. And then here we just add further information to the labels. So if we do this, probably makes sense to make use of variables. So for example, the first one could be for the item name. Uh, so here we have the variable item name is equal to what we just did before. And then the second part is going to be for the value. So over here, var, and then value. Now for the value, here I would like to have my sales total. So for that, I already have a measure. So I'm just going to refer to that one. And we also need to say how we want to format it. Otherwise, it's going to be, well, showing it as a full number. And actually, I just want to show it displayed in thousands or millions. So for that, we can wrap it inside of a format function. So I can say format. Sales total, that's the measure that returns our value. And then the formatting string. 
Well, over here, I want to show it in millions, so I'm going to use the formatting string that shows it in millions. Bound symbol, comma, bound symbol, bound symbol, zero, and then I want to have two commas there at the end, and maybe also one decimal, so dot zero. So the commas that you put in front of that decimal separator, that shows it in thousands, and then now here, because I have two in millions. Now, if you want to know all of the details, just check out and this video uh, over here. Okay, now, good. I'm going to close my quotation marks, close the format function, all right? So that's the second part, and now I just have to put it together, so I can do this with another variable. So I'm going to say var, and that underscore label is going to be equal to the item name, and then we can combine that with extra space in between, or maybe let's go for pipeline symbol, and then we combine that with the value. Okay, and that's what we want to return in the end. So return label. Okay, that's it. I see, now we have the values inside of the labels that we put above the bars. All right, and just like this, you might have the idea to extend that label even further by putting in maybe a little green icon when the year-over-year -year growth rate is above a certain percentage. Well, you might think, must be pretty easy. However, if you do this, then the following would happen. Let me go back to my measure. Now here, again, we can add another variable. Now, this one is going to be for an indicator. So indicator, all right? And here I would like to check if the year-over-year -year growth rate is, let's say, above 20%. Now, if it is, then I would like to show, and here you can do a Windows key and then period. And then I want to have this emoji with the green icon. All right. And then we can close the quotation marks and now close the if function. Okay. Now, only when it's above 20%, I want to show that green icon. And also this, we can then make part of the label. Okay. Now, over here, just copy that last part and then exchange value with indicator. Okay. Now, Looks all good and fine, but now if we look at the labels, you will see, well here, hmm, instead of showing a green icon, it shows again this, well, hashtag and then some number. Hmm. Doesn't make sense. And that is because, well, we cannot use these special icons or unique characters inside of the custom labels, at least not yet, okay? So until that is possible, this is not really an option. All right, so I'm going to go back to my measure and I'm just going to comment this out for the time being. All right, and also from here. What we can do, however, is use conditional formatting to apply different colors to the labels. All right, now that one is actually quite easy. So I'm gonna go here, add a new measure. Now let's call this new measure conditional formatting for the labels. Now here I want to check if the year over year growth rate is above the 20%. If it is, then I want to return the color green. If it's not, then I want to return the color red. Okay, now, instead of green and red, we can also use, well, custom hex codes. Now, let me just copy over some. All right, there you go. And press enter. Now, this measure we can then use for determining the color of the labels. So I'm gonna go back to the formatting options for the data labels. Here we select the series to which we want to apply the conditional formatting, which is labels placeholder. And then we can go over here to color and click there on the FX button. Now, here we have a measure that determines the color, so therefore field value, and the measure is called, well, CF. There it is, CF labels. All right, so now you see when we have the year over year growth above 20%, it shows in green and otherwise in red. So we have a lot of options to play around with the labels. Now, this whole technique of taking the labels from the y-axis to above the bar chart is great in some cases, but in other cases, well, the old normal way of just creating extra space uh, for the labels on the y-axis might be better. Well, it just depends on how much space you have for the bar chart itself versus how long the item names are. Now let's put the two options next to one another. On the left-hand side, we have the labels to the left-hand side of the bars. On the right-hand side, there we have the bar chart with the labels above the bars. Now you see the advantage of the first option is that we can show more bars. The disadvantage, however, is that, well, the bars themselves are becoming smaller and smaller, depending on how much space, well, you give to the bar chart and how long the item names are, all right? Now, 
That is then, of course, the advantage of the bar chart that we have on the right, where we put the labels above it, which then gives another advantage, and that is that you can also put more information in the labels. Now, of course, as soon as you start adding more and more information in the labels, well, at some point, well, it loses clarity as well. All right, so uh, you have to make that decision for each report yourself to see which one is better. But at least now you have a new technique that might come in handy in the future. All right, now that's it for this video. Now, if you have any questions, just put them in the comment section below. I want to thank you for watching this video. If you want to check out more tips and tricks around visualization design, then maybe you're interested in checking out these two as well. Now, I hope to see you in the next video.